Hi. In FL Studio, we've got several ways to fulfill our needs for doing real side chaining or simulating this behavior. This video shall give an overview of the options available, what they are doing well and maybe not so well. This ducking technique was invented for movie and broadcasting needs to clean up vocals. Or for example, ducking background music through the voice of a radio presenter by using a compressor. Here's a classic scenario with kick and bass and no sidechain ducking at all. One can hear and see in the limiter that every time when kick and bass are playing at the same time, the sound starts to distort. Respectively, the limiter pushes down the signal. To make sidechain compression work, I send the kick channel to the bass with the corresponding entry. Working with a native compressor, I just choose the kick from my sidechain selector and turn down the threshold with a ratio of 4 to 1. The visuals in the display are a great help to see the shape, how the bass gets ducked by the incoming kick signal. With the attack and release of the compressor, I have a bit of control how fast the ducking shall begin and for how long it shall last. But in the limiter above, you can see there is still a problem. There are still some spikes which the limiter suppresses. To get rid of them, I have to turn my attack to zero. But doing so introduces another problem, which gets obvious when I mute the kick. An instant attack introduces a kind of pop or click sound because of this rapid volume change when the kick starts to play. I have to raise the attack to nearly 15 milliseconds to get rid of this click. But when I now bring my kick back in, there is the same spike again on the master. There is a safe way to eliminate the click without getting the spike. But this introduces latency. The look ahead function of the limiter allows me going even to zero attack on the compressor for a tight result. I have seen many people struggling by setting up VSTs for this task. The procedure is very simple and always the same. First, I have to take care the plugin I want to use even provides a second input for doing sidechain compression. In the wrapper settings, under processing, I look for a second input port. If there is no second input port, it is not possible to use this compressor for sidechaining. Every sidechain capable compressor has to have at least a second input where you have to choose the channel you want to sidechain from. Second, I have to tell the plugin itself that it shall react now to the second input. This is different for every plugin. Sometimes it's a drop down menu, sometimes it's a button. But looking for the term external is always a good idea. Once set up properly, they are the same controls to use like with the native one. But with third-party plugins too, it's the same story. Setting the attack short enough to catch the peaks introduces the same click. And most third-party compressors do not have any look-ahead delay, which could eliminate the problem like I did in the native one. The most classical way doing, or better emulating, sidechain compression in FL Studio is by using the P controller, which has to be inserted onto the channel you want to use for triggering the ducking effect, the kick channel in my example here. On the bass channel, I put a fruity balance and link its volume knob to the controller's peak output. As the volume shall be turned down when the kick plays, I have to invert the modulation. 
Setting the base level of the P-Controller to 20% gives me back the 0 dB maximum level when the modulation is finished. Volume lets me set how much gain will be reduced by the kick signal. From little to infinity. The problem here is again the remaining peaks on the master. The fruity balance seems to react too slow and leaves again such peaks when it's automated by the peak controller. The most tight plugin I found for getting rid of these spikes is to automate the volume of the PEQ2. Here I have to change the bass to 50%, but it leaves just a few spikes here and there. The PEQ2 on the other hand has a limited range of plus minus 15 dB, which should be enough for many tasks, but not for all. Using automation clips for sidechain ducking is the next obvious step to do. Automation clips have very detailed control how the curve behaves and there's no need of any audio input for it to work. You can place them wherever you want and be in total control what happens when. And even our before failing Fruity Balance plugin catches the peaks now. You can save different shapes as presets, which are in future just one click away. Our house-made own LFO tool, the Fruity Love Filter, works as good as its paid competitors for this task. Putting in a shape to your liking in a tempo sync grid on the volume tab gives you a smooth and very customizable result. As do the corresponding VSTs. Last but not least, my personal favorite in many situations. It's MIDI controlled, so I just copy over the MIDI from the kick. I have now 8 super advanced articulators under my fingertips. Presets are easy to save and to recall. And it works flawless with any plugin. So here we go. These are our main sidechain options for using an Effort Studio. Let's compare their pros and cons. Especially by using the native compressor, it simply works fast and easy. It's audio related. This sounds very simple, but has a huge impact. You can define to which parts of the frequency spectrum the compressor shall react. This gives you a big range of use cases from simple sidechain to advanced deassing. It ducks the audio always when in our case the kick is playing. But on the other hand, just then. Sounds again simple, but think of two scenarios. First, other rhythms than four on the floor. The compressor doesn't care which rhythm you play or if it changes over time. The kick plays, the signal gets ducked, no matter if it's on the up or down beats, or mixed, or off the grid. Second, for many sounds, sidechain pumping is not a wished effect but necessary when mixing. In a song, there are often situations where the kick doesn't play and where you don't want to have this pumping effect. By using something like LFO tool or similar, you would have to automate the wet level to bypass the effect in these cases. With real sidechain compression, it's done without any further interaction. No kick, no effect. It's volume sensitive. If you do a sidechain with for example a snare roll, which starts low in volume and getting slowly to the max, the compressor simply follows. First it ducks the signal just a little bit, and as the snare gets louder, the more the other sound gets pushed back.
it's timing sensitive. A compressor doesn't care how long the signal lasts which triggers its detection circle. With mostly all other methods we have looked at, you can just define one shape for the ducking, which gets repeated over and over again. The compressor doesn't care. Short signal, short ducking, longer signal, longer ducking. It's latency compensated. No matter if any latency causing plugin is placed before it, the result is always in the right spot. But there are some cons as well. The actual shape of the action is not very user definable. There are some controls, but not comparable to other methods. Click and pop sounds with faster timings. You have seen, it isn't a question which compressor you use. It's a common problem that sharper changes introduce unwanted artifacts in the sound. At least there is a solution with a native one and its look ahead delay. But then you have to deal with the latency, which is sometimes not wished either. It's not included when you consolidate. The way consolidation in FL Studio and many other doors work is that behind the scenes, everything other than the selected parts get muted in the playlist. And therefore, only the selected part gets rendered, just because it's the only hearable one. In our case, this means that the clips for our kick get muted too, and no sidechain signal reaches the compressor anymore. The only workaround would be to select the kick patterns too. But to not having the kick hearable in the consolidated file, one needs either to have a second track for the sidechain trigger only, which is disconnected from the master all the time, or you would have to disconnect the kick channel from the master just for the consolidation. Neither way is what I would call desirable. The P controller at the very end is very similar to the points of the compressor. It's audio related, it's volume sensitive, it's timing sensitive, latency compensated, but here we've got no clicks and pops without introducing any latency. The cons are very similar too. The shape isn't very flexible either. It depends which plugin you choose to automate to get good results. It's not easy to adapt it to a different track. Not every track needs the same strength or depth of ducking. With a compressor you just lower the threshold or change the timing. With the P-Controller, one has to use the mapping formulas in the Link to Controller window or separate plugins to shape to your needs. It's not included in consolidation. Automation clips are usable in a very flexible way, no matter how complex you like the shape. Tight result with any plugins, no latency and no artifacts in the sound. Can be placed and left out wherever you want. Different shapes with save and recall. They are included in the consolidation. Automation clips are never muted when consolidating. Doing the side chaining this way, the effect will always be present in your files. They are latency compensated as well. For the cons, the clips have to be placed or copied manually to all the places you wish to have them. Similar to the P-Controller. It's not easy to adapt it to different targets. Not audio related. It cannot react to just certain aspects of the signal like the previous two. Not volume sensitive. You would have to automate the automation to simulate this behavior. Not timing sensitive. All changes have to be done manually with clips you make unique. Transport sync plugins are the easiest to set up. Just in the, the plugin, choose the shape and done. Easy to set up for every track differently. Perfect side chaining without any artifacts and latency. All done with a single plugin without the need of any external input. Their effect is always included in consolidations. They are latency compensated too. The cons? They are only really usable for standard 4 on the floor rhythms because they are not latency compensated when triggered via MIDI. Apart from creating very complex shapes, 
the only usable way to adapt such plugins to different rhythms would be to trigger the envelope via MIDI. But MIDI to control VST plugins is not latency compensated in FL Studio. They are not audio related. They need to be automated to bypass the effect in wished situations. They are not volume sensitive without additional automation and aren't timing sensitive. The envelope controller is usable in a very flexible way like automation clips, but offer eight different shapes in a single plugin. Triggered by just one signal, but could be triggered all differently if you wish so. Perfect result with any plugins. No latency and no artifacts in the sound. The triggering MIDI can be placed and left out wherever you want. Different shapes with looping, save and recall envelope shapes or presets for the whole plugin. Any rhythms and timings possible independent from any audio input. They are fully latency compensated. The cons? Not audio related, not volume sensitive, not timing sensitive. They are semi-adaptable to different tracks. The envelope controller has basically the same restrictions like the peak controller and automation clips at first glance. But with their 8 articulators, it's easy to set up some different shapes and different modulation depth with full recall. They are not included in consolidations, but they don't produce any sound, so you can easily select them too for consolidation without having to mute anything. At the very end, it's a matter of taste. Like with many tasks in music production, just take the right tool for the certain situation you want it for. If I've got a straight 4 on the floor rhythm, I mostly reach out for the transport sync plugins. Cable Guy's Volume Shaper is my personal choice here. If I have more complex rhythms going, I use 95% of the time the envelope controller. If I need frequency related side chaining, I use Patcher with a compressor or dynamic EQ. There is no right or wrong, and because of that, it's a good idea to know all the different methods well enough to choose the right one for the job. Enjoy studying the different sidechain options in FL Studio, and thank you for watching.